I didn't think I was going to space again. I mean, it felt so fortunate to be part of that experience. But coming back from Inspiration4, seeing the direction SpaceX is going with Starship, having an opportunity to participate in a real developmental program where you're either you know, testing technology and techniques that haven't been done in 50 years or something that hasn't been done at all um, was pretty exciting. So um, you know, we came up with some great objectives for the Polaris program, thrilled to sign up for it, and also continue some of the, the good work we're doing with St. Jude. So the Polaris program, it's three missions. Ultimately, hopefully, it culminates in the first crewed flight of Starship as well. I guess, talk me through the arc of what you plan to do and accomplish on each of these missions. Right, so, I mean, just starting with the, the first one, Polaris Dawn, which is what um, we're getting ready for, um, for, early, you know, for early next year. And um, basically, we have three objectives on that mission. One, we're, we're going to go to the highest uh, Earth orbit ever flown. So farther away from Earth uh, since the last time somebody walked on the moon 50 years ago, so that's pretty cool. Um, but besides just being, um, you know, a, a really interesting view and altitude, we're going to gain a lot from uh, radiation exposure, really close to the Van Allen uh, radiation belt. And that, that informs two things. One, just vehicle design, because avionics don't like radiation. And two, if we are going to you know, get to the moon, ideally get to Mars at some point and back, we'd like to do it and be, be healthy along the way. Uh, so maybe uh, find ways to develop some countermeasures to better protect crew on, their, on a, a journey that hopefully a lot of people will be able to undertake one day when, when Starship comes online. Uh, you know, two, we're going to do an EVA. So we're going to do a spacewalk. We're going to vent the entire Dragon capsule down to vacuum, and then we're going to exit the vehicle. And, and, and the reason for that is when we do get back to the moon and eventually get to Mars, we're probably going to want to leave the safety of our vehicle or habitat and get work done on the, on, the, on the surface of the planet. So we need to be able to make spacesuits not like one at a time, as it's been done over the last like 40 years, that cost hundreds of millions. We need to be able to mass produce lots of spacesuits for the amount of people that we hope someday be able to send to Mars. Um, not to mention gaining experience with the operations will help um, future missions. And then third, we're going to communicate over Starlink satellite constellation. Uh, instead of the, the ground stations and satellites that were, you know, 40 years old that are kind of uh, slow. Uh, so when we do get to Mars and you want to send a video message home, you can be able to do that, um, you know, keep that good connection back to Earth. So, um, so that's one of our three objectives, along with about 40 science and research experiments over five days. How did the Polaris program come to be? I mean, is this specifically your baby? Is it a partnership? with SpaceX? Are you a customer of SpaceX? Like, how to think about that? It, so it's a partnership with SpaceX. Uh, so that's why we have two of our crew members are actually SpaceX engineers. Uh, so very talented employees. Um, you know, Anna Menon, she's our uh, mission specialist and uh, our medical officer. So she was a biomedical uh, uh, controller at NASA. Uh, she's a lead mission director. So if you saw Apollo 13, she's the Ed Harris in the room. Uh, so you can imagine what she would gain from going to space and being able to bring that to mission control. And then um, uh, uh, Sarah Gillis, she was the lead astronaut trainer for SpaceX. Uh, she trained uh, myself and the Inspiration4 crew. She's trained every NASA astronaut crew that's gone to space on a Dragon. Uh, you can imagine the benefit of having a, a lead astronaut trainer actually go to space to train what should be hopefully hundreds of thousands of people in the future. So SpaceX is contributing talent to it. They're making a lot of investments in this mission for spacesuits, vehicle changes, life support changes to support in EVA. Um, you know, Polaris is contributing equally into it. And the actual objectives for our missions were, were actually jointly formed with Elon uh, shortly after the Inspiration Four mission.